All right, so KGEC, you guys should know this song by now, but I'm gonna review it just to make sure that you guys remember. It goes a little something like this. You're the resurrection and the life. Whoa, I believe in you, so I'll never die. Whoa, come on, say it. You're the resurrection. Uh-huh, I believe in you, so I'll never die. You got it, you're the resurrection. You're the resurrection and the life. All right, okay, let's go. Here we go. So I want you to get live. I want you to get free. Here we go. One, two, oh, one. You're the resurrection. You're the resurrection and the life. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I believe in you so I never die. Your name, the high authorities bow, the high authorities bow to your name. 
principalities bow. To your name, to your name. The principalities bow. bow. The high authorities bow. bow. The principalities bow. To your name, to your name. The principalities bow. bow. And diseases have to bow. bow. Everyone's gonna bow, bow at the sound of the name. Bow. Cause at the name of Jesus, bow. every knee's gonna bow. bow. Every knee's gonna bow.
wanna be like you. Know the one I am. And I'd love to be near you. Come now and be the fire. And Jesus, my one. Jesus, my one desire. And you are my one. You are my one desire. And you're the Every heart, I worship. 
worship you. I worship you. that you are still the God that makes ways in the wilderness and rivers in the, de in the desert. And we worship you in Jesus' name.
I want to welcome you this morning to Kingdom Gate Equipping Center. My goodness, isn't the Lord good? Amen. Let us get into a word of prayer this morning. Gracious, loving Heavenly Father, we thank you for yet another opportunity that we have in which we gather around your word. Father, I thank you for your presence being with me, but also your presence being with each and every individual under the sound of my voice. Father, would you speak through my lips, think through my mind, all of you, as well as all of me, being able to communicate exactly what you would have to be said today. Holy Spirit, would you move in each room, causing each individual to hear some things that they've never heard before, so that they can believe for some things that they've never believed before. Heal, deliver in every space. We give you praise and thanksgiving today. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Well, glory to God. Well, did you get to see the solar eclipse? My goodness, wasn't that absolutely amazing, beautiful? In the midst of looking up into the sky, in the midst of being able to see this, it really again showed to me the beauty of creation and the beauty and the greatness of our God. It's amazing to also capture the reality that what we've been looking at for a number of weeks now is that we're looking for goodness. We're looking because we understand that Psalms 23 verse 6 tells us that, that what? Goodness and mercy follows us all the days of our life. So even in the midst of when there may be some dark clouds in your life, maybe some negative situations that's in and around you, guess what? Goodness is right there, even in the midst of a negative situation. What are we looking at? It's recognizing that God is with you. Jesus mentioned and he said to us that he would never leave us nor forsake us. And I believe it's very important for us, especially in this day and age with so much negativity, so much things pressuring us from the outside for us to believe incorrectly, for us to believe that God isn't there, maybe to believe and just in, not even in the goodness that is possible to be manifested within people's lives, that we can end up consistently seeing negative around us. And remember last week we looked at this reality that we want to lock into the reality of thinking on only those things which are good, which are just, which are of good report, which, which those things we, we want to turn our thermostat high on looking for the goodness of God. Amen. Would you tell somebody beside you, I'm looking for goodness. Type it out. Come on right now. Type it out. That Send up some hearts that I'm looking for good. No matter what the situation is, I am going to look for goodness, for God's goodness to show up. Show up in my body. Maybe I need healing. Show up in my pocketbook. I need some finances. Maybe to show up in with a new job, a new career path, new career stream. I am looking for good. Well, remember we looked at this, this concept found in Romans 8.28. And I'm asking you this question right now off the top. Are you convinced yet? Are you convinced yet? Let's, let's look at this passage of scripture again. Are you convinced that every detail of your life is continually woven together for good? The bad, the quote unquote, the good, the indifferent, that everything is continually woven together for you and I to experience the goodness of God. I want you, just even for a moment, just for a moment, just for a quick moment, stop. And would you just thank God? Father, I just thank you for your goodness showing up in my life. Sometimes, sometimes we don't pause enough to identify, to recognize. 
God has provided. I'm still on the line of the living. I'm on this side of the earth, amen. That's a good thing, amen. God's goodness, God's mercy. You know, it's, it's, you know let's pause for a moment and lock into the reality of the beauty of the goodness of God that is continually shown in our life. You know, one of the things I realize is that as a believer, you and I must mature, or our, sorry, let me say it this way. Our maturity is seen and is manifested through love. The more we love, the more we grow in love, the more we grow in forgiveness, this reflects our maturity in Christ. Not how much we pray in tongues, not how much we uh, give financially, not how much we what do you work miracles, not how much we uh, what else heal. My God might use us to minister healing into lives, into individuals. That's not what is a reflection of maturity. A reflection of maturity, our maturity is the result of how much, how deep our love is. How deep we reflect the love of God to other people. How much we reflect forgiveness. And attached to this, I believe this is where now we can begin to see the goodness of God manifested. So I want to take this week this message and really highlight i want this aspect of the goodness of god to permeate deep within our soul that we when we have the opportunity is presented to think evil to do evil that a good verse a good scripture a good the goodness of god would flow out of us are you ready? Let's look at a, a number of scriptures as it pertains to the goodness of God. Let's look at Exodus 34 verse 6 that tells us, The Lord, the God, sorry, the Lord, the Lord God, merciful and gracious, long-suffering and abounding in goodness and truth. That's who God is. He is long-suffering. He is gracious. He is merciful. He is abounding in goodness and truth. Come on, amen, praise God. Secondly, 1 Chronicles 16, 34 tells us, Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. God is good, amen. Ezra 3, 11 tells us, And they sang responsively, praising and giving thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endures forever towards Israel. I want to say his mercy endures. He is good and his mercy endures towards Israel. Toronto, his mercy towards forever, towards Kingdom Gate Equipping Center. His mercy endures forever towards you and your family. Let's look at Psalms 25 verse 8. Good and upright is the Lord. Who is good? God is good. Amen. And he has put his goodness in you and me. Uh, surely goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our life. What? Psalms 23 verse 6. Psalms 145 verse 9, the Lord is good to some. No, the Lord is good to all and his tender mercies are over all his works. Yes, that's why we can look for the goodness of God in the land of the, the living. We can look for the goodness of God in the earth, in our cities, in our nations, we look for the goodness of God because God, who is good, created everything good. Yes, the, the, the earth, the people, lands, animals, it's all good. Amen. Mark 10 verse 18 tells us, no one is good but who? But the one God. Yes. Amen. James 1 17 tells us, every good gift, every perfect gift is from above. And comes down from the Father of lights with whom there is no variation or shadow of turning. Who? God, who is good, releases good. Everything that comes from God is good. And a good God has placed himself in you. So guess what? As the believer, you and I have inside of us 
goodness yes why not because we're good in our own self no because god who is good has put goodness inside of us and we're going to see that in a moment i would have lost heart unless i had believed that i would see the goodness of the lord in the land of the living psalms 27 13 or oh, psalms 145 verse 5 to 7 tells us i will meditate on the glorious splendor of your majesty and on your wondrous works Men shall speak of the might of your awesome acts, and I will declare your greatness. They shall utter the memory of your great goodness and shall sing of your righteousness. My goodness, we, ha we have the ability and the pleasure to utter the memory of the goodness, of the great goodness of God. Yes! That's, that's what our memory must be. And our memory, that, this is what I tell you, when the opportunity comes for you to re react and to think evil or to do evil, we want to be able to what is going to come up out of our soul because our spirit is influencing our soul and our soul is going to remember the goodness of God. We're going to speak good instead of re reacting it, with evil, we're going to speak good. Are you with me? Psalms 33 verse 5 tells us, He loves righteousness and justice. The earth is full of the goodness of the Lord. Yes, the earth. Canada is full of the goodness of the Lord. I know it may not look like that, but I'm telling you what the word of God tells us. Okay, amen. The United States is full of the goodness of the Lord. Yes, yes, yes. I don't care what things may look like. Russia is full of the goodness of the Lord. Yes, Iran is full of the goodness of the Lord. The goodness of the Lord is in the earth according to the word of God. Oh, that men would give thanks to the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. For he satisfies the longing soul and fills the hungry soul with goodness. Psalms 107 verse eight and nine. Teach me to do your will, for you are my God, your spirit. Lead me in the land of uprightness. Psalms 143 verse 10. Are, are you convinced yet? Of the goodness of God? Are you convinced yet that, that your life is interwoven is interconnected that every intricate detail of your life conveys the goodness of God? Oh, you're not convinced yet? Okay, let's come on. Let's go a little bit more. Verse one, Psalms 119, verse 68. You are good and do good. Teach me your statues. I want you to think, oh yes, God is good and he, he, he will do good, but let's let the Spirit of God teach us what the goodness of God is. Yes, Nehemiah 9 verse 20 tells us, you also gave your good spirit to instruct them and did not withhold your manna from their mouth and gave them water for their thirst. Oh, thank you, God. You gave us your good spirit. Thank you. The Holy Spirit is a is good spirit, is good, is God. Amen. Psalms 69 verse 16. Hear me, O Lord, for your loving kindness is good. Turn to me according to the multitude of your tender mercies. Goodness and mercy. Mercy and goodness. Kindness has been given to us. Oh, how great. So, sorry. Oh, how great is your goodness, which you have laid up for those who fear you, which you have prepared for those who trust in you in the presence of the sons of men. You shall hide them in the secret place of your presence from the plots of men. You shall keep them secretly in a pavilion from the strife of tongues. Psalms 31, 19 and 20. That's something to lock into. Locking into understanding the goodness. The goodness of God will keep you in a place of preservation in a place and a space of peace where nothing can harm you. No evil, no disease, according to Psalms 91, it will be able to touch you when you lock into the, the reality of the goodness of God. Nahum 1 verse 7 tells us, the Lord is good, a stronghold in the day of trouble, and he knows those who trust in him. Yes, 
So are you convinced yet about the goodness of God? Are you convinced yet? No, don't tell. You still need some more convincing. Okay, let's go. Let's go. Let's see some more scriptures concerning the goodness of God or the God who is good that we need to look for. Look for his appearance of goodness in our lives. Look for his appearance, his manifestation of goodness to show up even when there's darkness taking place. Let's look at that. Like, ah, yeah. Ephesians chapter 5 verse 9 tells us, For the fruit of the light of light is found in all that is good and right and true. Yes. Galatians 5.22, we know this. But the fruit of the Spirit, the fruit of Holy Spirit God being placed on the inside of the believer, God removing the heart of stone, giving a heart of flesh, an obedient heart that we have as believers, a soft, pliable heart that we end up having, what is encapsulated within the heart, this new heart, this new creation, this new species, species, this new creature, this new creation that's on the inside of us is something beautiful. It's not nine spirits, but it's one spirit that has one fruit that has nine parts to it. Love, joy, peace, oh, long suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith. Goodness is locked up inside of you and I. Yes, just like love, just like peace, joy, all of those divisions of who the fruit of the Spirit waiting to be manifested, manifested in you and I. And I want to submit Many times it's manifested or should be manifested in conditions when we're squeezed. Yeah, when we're squeezed. So it's like years ago when I was younger, growing up, and to have some daily orange juice, you had to, my mom would cut the orange in half, and then you had the, I guess the orange squeezer, I think it's called, but you know it. It went inside the orange, the half of the orange, and you twisted it, and you twisted it enough, then the juice would come out, and then you pour it into a glass. You get fresh, real orange juice with seeds. Yes, with seeds. <laughs> with the pulp. Yes, that, that, that is real. That's not extracted. That's another point. That's something else to touch on. But, but it's being able to taste and see and enjoy the vitamin C and enjoy the orange juice, but it's under pressure that that comes out. Maybe presently your life is, you're experiencing some level of pressure, some level of where there's some negativity and some dark, darkness showing up. I want you to understand that right now, it's the greatest time for you to allow God's goodness to be manifested in you. Under pressure for the fruit to be born. And that fruit might be, in some cases, for some of us, sometimes it's, it's suffering long in a situation. I don't get to tell you when the end of that season will be. Season of darkness. I don't get to tell you that. No one gets to tell you that. But I want you to understand that God is with you, God is in you, God is for you, and God will help you. He wants you to learn, maybe in this season, patience. Maybe in this season is, is learning to, even in the midst of adversity, having the joy of the Lord which becomes your strength. Yes, maybe in this season of you, in the midst of darkness, still having some peace. Maybe in the midst of like, uh, uh, us looking at the solar eclipse that to be able to see the beauty and the majesty of creation and of the universe it's going to require you putting on some specific glasses so that you can see 
the universe properly. You can see the beauty of the sun and of the moon. You can see beyond the dark clouds. Are you with me? Can, can you hear prophetically that, that God wants you and I to, to see, to have sight beyond the darkness, beyond the doom? You know what? Yeah, we have, we got in the same midst of God desiring you and I to see goodness. There are those who might be prophesying that, oh, well, this is the seal and, and, and the, the, the sun turning red. Well, come on. Come on. Come on, people of God. Don't allow yourself to be duped when ever so oft, so, so many years, there's a solar eclipse. There is a, partial eclipse. Don't allow people to dupe you into not seeing and understanding who your good God is. Is God good to you and is good to everyone, good to all of humanity? Or is he a wicked, terrible God? You got to make a decision of based on the scriptures, based on what you see, what, what the truth that you know is what is going to set you free. Let's continue on. Are you convinced yet of the goodness of God? I want to convince you. I want to convince you this morning so that you're anchored in the truth of who God is. Romans 12 verse 9 tells us, let love be genuine, abhor what is evil, hold fast to what is good. Hold fast to good. Hold fast to a good God. Hold fast to goodness. Stay anchored and locked into good and not evil. Galatians 6, 10, 10 tells us, So then as we have opportunity, let us do good to everyone. And especially to those who are of the household of faith. Do good to your brothers. Do good to your pastor. Do good to your, your sister, to your household. Do good to the, the household of faith. Start there. And as we are living and we're looking for goodness and looking for opportunity to do good to people around us, and it starts within the household of faith, then we look to do good to people in the earth. To everyone, everyone deserves to be treated with goodness. So are you convinced yet that every detail of your life is interwoven and the end of it is good? Come on, let's continue on. Let's continue on here. James 1.17, for every good gift, every perfect gift is from above. From the Father of lights in whom there is no variableness, no shadow of turning. God doesn't present us good and then turns around and then presents evil. That's not God. That's a, a good, good God. Everything that comes from him, that flows down from heaven, that flows forth from God is good. And that's what he wants us also to be operating from is that we also are channels of his goodness. Oh, I got a few more just before we close out. Galatians 6.10 tells us, so then as we have opportunity, every opportunity that you have, let us do good to everyone. Let us do good to everyone and especially those who are of the household of faith. Yes, we start in the household of faith. Yes, to our brothers and sisters. Yes, that are in the household of faith, that are washed by the blood of the Lamb. We are to do good. And then from this place, there's, a, there's an eruption, there's a volcanic er, uh, eruption and an explosion of goodness that saturates, that flows out into the community, that flows into the educational realm, that flows into the government realm, that flows into the arts and entertainment that flows, that flows into science and technology that flows and flows and flows and the earth <laughs> experiences the goodness of God. Are you convinced yet that God is good? <laughs> Romans 12, 9. Let, let love be genuine. Abhor what is evil. Hold fast to what is good. Hold fast to good. Hold fast to good. Yes, hold fast to 
God, I know. Don't let go. Don't let go. Don't let go. Don't let anyone pull you away of manifesting and releasing the goodness of God. Yes, when evil is presented. Yes, when you hear evil communication. Yes, when when all that is taking place within our society and wants us to react, choose to respond from the good space in your heart, from goodness, from the fruit of good. Yes, from the fruit of good. I think you're getting it. I think you're, you're being convinced. I think you're being convinced. First Peter 3.13. Now, who is there to harm you if you are zealous of what is good? <laughs> who can harm you? The, the big bad wolf can't harm you. No, the devil can't harm you. No harm, no harm, no harm. Why? Because you are walking in the goodness of God. Goodness and mercy is beside you. Yes. When you get the opportunity to reflect goodness at all times. Titus 2.14. Who gave himself for us to redeem us from all lawlessness and to purify for himself a people for his own possession who are zealous for good works. You and I are a people who are zealous. A zealous, a fiery, passionate people. Passionate about good works. We're zealous. That's who the pe- that's who children of God ought to be. That's who we are. Zealous about good works, not about evil. We're zealous about good works of seeing goodness in people. Oh, I'm excited. Oh, I'm excited. I-, I just have a vision that I believe that starting right here at Kingdom Gate Equipment Center, starting with every individual under the sound of my voice, that if we allow ourselves, we yield to Ho- Holy Spirit, we yield to a good God, and we go about looking for good, but doing good also doing good, that we can transform our homes, transform our business, transform our cities, transform our nation, and transform the nations of the earth. Pushing back online, pushing back evil. 2 Corinthians 9 verse 8, and God is able to make all grace abound to you, watch this, so that having all sufficiency in all things, watch this, having sufficiency in all things at all times, you may abound in every good work, everything that you end up doing. This is why we declare, we confess that God blesses the works of your hands. God blesses that, that, that everything that you do is good. Are you convinced yet? I know I, I'm convinced and I'm, conv- I'm getting more and more convinced. I'm con- convinced of who Holy Spirit is on the inside of me and what he wants to perform. 1 Corinthians 15, 33. Oh, I love this one. Be not deceived. Bad company ruins good morals. I want you to, to understand it. Therefore, stop keeping company with bad thoughts. Yeah. That's when it hit me, the revelation of that God. Stop keeping company with bad thoughts. It's not just bad people. It's bad thoughts. Bad thoughts entertaining in my mind and in my heart towards people, towards our city, towards our nation, towards situations. No, I'm going to choose to have good thoughts. I'm going to choose to believe for good to show up. I'm going to believe for good to show up in our educational system. I'm going to believe for good to show up within the church. I'm going to believe for good to show up in our government, that we're going to have a good leaders, that we have good leaders. Yes, I believe. I believe God is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all I ask, think, imagine. More. Ephesians 4.29. Let no corrupt communication or talk come out of your mouth, but only such as is good for building up. Woo! Yes! So I can choose to only allow that which comes out of my mouth is going to build up. I'm, I'm allowing Holy Spirit to work on me about that. Because I don't always do it. But... I believe I'm progressively getting better at it because I allow Holy Spirit to, as I yield to Holy Spirit and allow my choices to align with him. Speak no evil. Think no evil. Yeah. Of choosing to speak only good because I thought only good. 
good for building up as fits the occasion that it may give grace to those who hear. <sighs> yes, I'm a grace teacher. Yes, I believe in the grace of God. Yes, I believe in the mercy of God. Yes, I believe in the loving kindness of God. Yes, I believe in the tender mercies of God. Yes, 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 I believe. So that's what I need to access and release out of me. Lastly, Romans 2 verse 4 tells us, do you think lightly? Do you think lightly of the riches of his goodness? Do you think lightly of that? And restraint and patience, knowing that it's the goodness and the kindness of God that leads us to repentance. Do you think that just because there isn't a sentence that of quote-unquote negativity or that you, you, you feel that, oh, God doesn't see what we have done that is evil in his sight. Do you think that, man, that God isn't in control? God's in control. He knows. He knows what governments are doing and what people are doing. He knows. He's written the script. The script has already been written. Remembering that, listen, you got to remember that, listen, God already forgave us. Before you even came into the earth, you were already forgiven. Yes, we struggle with the fact we think that, oh my goodness, God only forgave me of things that I did yesterday. No, God forgave you. Oh, you're already forgiven of what you what the sin that you're about to commit. You're already forgiven of the sin that you you you're going to do next week. You're already forgiven of the sin that you will commit a year from now, 10 years from now, if you live, if you're still alive on the earth. That's the reality. You've been forgiven, past, present, future. You really believe that. That's what is factored in. But he takes all of that. It's already factored into it. But understand, it is not the fear of a terrible God who's going to wipe us out of the earth. It's the reverential fear of a good God that leads us to repentance. Well, what's repentance? Repentance is Making 180 degree is turning from what you presently believe and believing something else. It's, 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 it's about, at, at its simplest meaning, it's about changing your thinking. Change your thinking. Are you convinced yet that God is good? Are you, I want a child, repent for thinking God is a wicked God, that God is not with you. Repent from thinking that he's not for you. Repent for believing that he forgot you, that you've been forgotten. Repent. Change, re change your thinking. Repent and be converted. And a time of refreshing is going to come from the presence of the Lord. A time of renewing, renewal is going to spring forth. And then you're going to realize, man, God is for me. God is with me. So that's why the ending of Romans chapter 8, that, that Paul can say, no matter height, death, you know, nothing, no matter what I experience in life is going to be able to separate me, separate Roger from the love of God. I am convinced that every detail of my life is continually woven together for good. What about you? What about you? I want to encourage you. Meditate upon these scriptures. Allow them to, to saturate over your very soul so that it allows you to be stay in alignment of who you are. God has made and placed his character, his image inside of you. You're going to look more and more like a good God as we walk in the midst of darkness, a dark world that we presently are in. But we are to shine light of goodness. We're to shine in the midst of darkness and allow the goodness of God to be manifested in the earth. 
Father, I bless you. I bless you. I bless each and every individual on the sound of my voice. Father, thank you that each individual hears and understands, locks into the reality that you are with them, you are for them, and that your goodness, you said, and your mercy will follow us all the days of our lives. So we look for it. We expect we change our lens. We put on a new eye, new new glasses. The glasses of faith. We are, we we look from heaven's perspective, and we see all oh, goodness all around us. We bless you today, Father. Thank you that you bring healing, you bring hope, you bring strength to each and every individual, even now. Now, if you have never given your heart to the Lord, I want you to experience His goodness. God, a good God, manifested in your life. Well, you simply have to say, Lord, I believe that you are the son of the living God. I believe you died. I believe you rose from the grave. I confess it with my mouth because I believe in my heart. And he said, he now, God says, precious one, he's come to make himself resident inside of you. Would you reach out to us? at info at kgec.ca we would be pleased to help you with your walk with God give you some material to help you with your walk with God we're looking forward to seeing you at one of our in-person services but right today we're going to be having our watch party so we want to encourage you come on we're going to get into a few questions right now Q&A and locking around the Word of God. But our next gathering is next Sunday, and we want to see you in person. I want to personally give you this invitation. If you're within the GTA, within the Toronto area, why don't you connect with us? Come on out. Come and experience the goodness of God. We look forward to seeing you. God bless you, Richard.